Language truly sets humans apart from all the other creatures on Earth. We have the ability to express almost any concept, from the most mundane to the most extraordinary. The emergence of language has always been an extremely controversial topic. The ladies not for turning. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. How do you start with the grunts and groans and howls of our ape-like ancestors and then evolve all the sophistication of a Shakespeare? This is one of the big puzzles in language. How do you evolve an arbitrary set of symbols to denote objects and events and relationships in the external world? Did our ancestors all sit next to the fireplace and say, axe, everybody say axe after me, axe. Obviously not, that's not how it got started. But if that didn't happen, how did it get started? To test his theory on how language might have gotten started, Professor Ramachandran heads for Pacific Beach in San Diego, California. He believes that the synesthesia in all of us means we have a shared ability to link certain sounds and objects. Could this have been the genesis of human language? I'm gonna do a simple experiment right here on the beach to test this, we're gonna take two shapes, one of which is kind of rounded and the other is sort of jagged, and we're gonna give them to people and ask them to tell us which one is a booba, which one is a kiki. These are just nonsense words. And we're gonna see if there is any non-random correspondence between one shape and one sound. One of them is booba, the other is kiki. Which is which? Booba, kiki. This is kiki, this is booba. I think that's booba and that's kiki. Which is which? That's a kiki and that's a booba. You sure? Pretty sure. I say booba. This is booba? Yeah. And this one is kiki? Yeah. Why do you say that? I don't know. It just looks like a booba. Just looks like a booba. Thank you. <laughs> booba and kiki. Well, when we showed people these shapes and said one of them is booba, the other is kiki, I would tell me which is which. Majority of them, 90, 95% of them, spontaneously said, that's a booba, that's a kiki, without even thinking about it. Kiki. Yeah. Booba. Kiki, booba. This one's booba and this one's kiki. Excellent, very good. This means there is a non-arbitrary correspondence, a spontaneous tendency in all of us to pick the bulbous amoeboid shape as the booba. So the gentle undulation of the sound contour represented in the hearing center in your brain mimics the gentle undulation of the visual contour. Similarly, ki ki has a sharp edge to it, sharp sound, and that's mimicking the sharp inflection of the visual contour of the kiki. Ki. And this is what you need, this initial bias is what you need to get the first words going. Ramachandran believes this synesthetic connection between our senses of hearing and vision was an important initial step towards the creation of words. Our earliest ancestors most likely first started to talk using sounds that actually evoked the object that they wished to describe. But he believes that was only the beginning of the process. Other links in the brain tend to reinforce the sounds we use. Just as you have synesthesia between sensory areas, you also have the propensity to mimic hand movements with lip and tongue movements. Now this is probably because the hand and the mouth area are right next to each other in the brain, and there is some cross-activation of the kind you see in synesthesia. What I'm claiming is that there is a non-arbitrary mapping between the hand gestures and unconscious lip and tongue movements. For example, un peu, diminuto, tinuini, chinna in an Indian language, versus enormous, large, where the lips actually mimic what the fingers are doing. And I don't think that's a coincidence. If this theory is correct, then language must have emerged from the multitude of synesthetic connections within our brains. We've got several types of interaction in place, but we can see how in evolution, all of these acting in conjunction start bootstrapping each other and enhancing each other, resulting in the whole avalanche that we call language.